Hey guys, welcome back to the laboratory. In this video, we are looking at ores. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the terms ore and native metal, identify and explain why a particular extraction method is used to extract a metal, and describe biological methods of extraction. So, let's go. Very unreactive metals, such as gold and silver, are found naturally in their native state. These metals are referred to as native metals. In contrast, most highly reactive metals are not found in their natural state. They have reacted with other elements to form compounds in rocks. Naturally occurring rocks that contain a profitable amount of these metals or metal compounds are called ores. Ores must contain enough of the metal or metal compounds to make it worthwhile to extract them. Malachite and hematite are examples of ores that are mined to extract common metals. Malachite is an ore containing copper carbonate and is mined to extract copper metal. Hematite is an ore containing iron oxide and is mined to extract iron metal. Several methods can be used to extract these metals from their ores. The cheapest and easiest of which is by heating the ore with carbon. When the ore is heated with carbon, the carbon will displace the metal from its ore, leaving the metal in its pure, uncombined state. For example, when an ore of iron oxide is reacted with carbon, the carbon will displace the iron from its compound. The products of this reaction are iron and carbon dioxide. We say that the iron has been reduced as it has lost oxygen, and the carbon has been oxidised as it has gained oxygen. Unfortunately, this method of extraction can only be used for metals that are less reactive than carbon. This means that for metals above carbon in the reactivity series, which are therefore more reactive than carbon, an alternative method of extraction must be used. Metals that are more reactive than carbon are extracted from their ores via electrolysis. The ore is heated until molten, where it splits into its respective ions. The metal ions are then attracted to the electrode of the opposite charge, where they gain electrons and return to neutral metal atoms. For example, the electrolysis of molten aluminium oxide yields aluminium metal and oxygen gas. The molten aluminium oxide splits into aluminium ions and oxygen ions. The oxygen ions are attracted to the positive electrode where they lose two electrons and discharge as oxygen gas. The aluminium ions are attracted to the negative electrode, where they gain three electrons and deposit as pure aluminium metal. In theory, all metals can be extracted from their ores via electrolysis. However, a lot of energy is required to keep the ores in molten form, therefore making it a costly process. Because of this, Electrolysis will only ever be used as an extraction method for metals that could not be extracted by a heating with carbon. Alternative methods of metal extraction use living organisms to extract metals from their ores. The first of these methods is called bioleaching and uses bacteria to extract copper metal from its ore. The bacteria break down low grade ores and produce an acidic solution called leachate. The leachate contains copper ions, which are then extracted using displacement and purified via electrolysis. The process does not release any harmful gases into the atmosphere. However, it is very slow and may release toxic substances that will damage the environment. The second of these methods is called phytoextraction, and this method involves the growth of plants in soil that is contaminated with low grade ores. As the plants grow, they absorb the metal compounds from the soil, which are then extracted by burning the plant into ash. The process is great for extracting metals from contaminated soils. However, again, it is very slow and can be a more expensive process than the mining of some ores. Here's an example of a past paper question that you can attempt to test your understanding of the content covered in this video. Pause the video and take your time to work it through. Press play once you're ready to check your answers. Metals are obtained from the Earth's crust by different methods. Some metals are found uncombined, 
but others have to be extracted from the ores by electrolysis or by heating the ore with carbon. Explain, using aluminium, gold and iron as examples, how the method used to obtain the metal is related to its position in the reactivity series and to the cost of the extraction process. As always with a six mark question, our answer must cover all areas highlighted to achieve the full marks. For this question specifically, we must discuss the positions of aluminium, iron and gold in the reactivity series and how this relates to the cost to extract them. We'll start firstly with gold. Gold is the least reactive of the three metals and is found at the bottom of the reactivity series. Gold is in fact a native metal, meaning it does not combine with other elements and is found in its natural state. Therefore, the cost to recover gold is very low. Iron is next in the reactivity series. It is more reactive than gold, but less reactive than aluminium. Both electrolysis and heating with carbon can be used as methods to extract iron from its ore. However, heating with carbon is the preferred, as it's much cheaper. And finally, we have aluminium, which is the most reactive metal of the three. Aluminium is more reactive than carbon, therefore it could not be extracted via heating with carbon. This means that electrolysis must be used to extract aluminium from its ore, despite the process being very expensive. So, how did you do on this question? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. Thank you for joining me in the laboratory. Please leave a like on this video if you found it useful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss another one. See you soon.